Welcome back, Renegades and Chili Beans. Today, Ren is releasing a new video. I'll be there in the live chat. Will you be there? If so, I'll see you there. But before then, we have a very special one. And this one was heavily requested a lot of times. Ren and Chinchilla, How to Be Me, live. Now you guys have told me in the comments that this was a tribute to Ren's friend Joe. And I've seen some discrepancies in the comments over the recording location of where this was filmed. Whether it was on the Manai Bridge where Joe spent his final moments or a rooftop somewhere. Regardless of where it was filmed. I stated in the previous video. These are the two best artist in the world and i'm sure i'm in for a stellar performance so without further ado ren and chinchilla how to be me I'm in for it here. There was a beautiful moment right before Ren started the acoustics. I want to go back to that. Right here, when they lock eyes, there's that brief pause before Ren starts the acoustics. And they're looking into each other's eyes. And not just as a visual cue for Ren to start the acoustics, but they're looking into each other's eyes and their souls are syncing up. Whenever these two get together, they just create pure magic and their voices intertwine so well. And it's that brief pause where there's nothing to be heard, but there's so much music in that silence and silence speaks volumes. I don't feel safe in this bed There are voices in my head I've been talking to the dead And the fear baptized me My kingdom turned I love Ren's voice so much. And he opens the song with such a subtle tone. And not just opens the song, but he opens himself to us. He doesn't feel safe in his own bed. And that's a place where you're supposed to feel safe. You're supposed to be comfortable in your own bed. But there's voices in his head. And it could be something that's troubling you when you lay down at the end of the night. It's giving you nightmares. And you can't stop thinking about it. Something transpired. And now it's circling in your head. And you can't escape it. to the dead and the fear baptized me my kingdom turned to dust and i watched all my and speaking of the nightmares i can't help but be visually compelled here by chinchilla's outfit it looks so similar and reminds me of freddy krueger right now she has the claws out, and just like Freddy Krueger, he has that glove with the claws. And even her hat is very similar. Freddy Krueger has that weathered fedora. And Ren doesn't feel safe in his own bed. 
He's hearing voices in his head. And that fear that baptized him, it's those nightmares. And Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, boy. Baptized me. My kingdom turned to dust. And I watched all my riches rust. Have I lost the Midas touch? Or do sad eyes blind me over and over? Oh. The Midas touch. The ability to turn everything to gold. Or to turn something from nothing into something even greater. So, have you lost the Midas touch? It's that questioning of oneself. Am I still able to do this? Am I still able to turn nothing into something? And you're questioning, do I still have it? But it's that questioning of oneself. Your kingdom turns to dust. Your riches rust. Your, it's that feeling of losing everything. You're watching everything around you deteriorate. And what can you do? How can you get that back? Can you get it back? You don't know. You just keep questioning yourself. Ren has told us that Joe provided so much happiness to everyone. He had the ability to light up the room. He was the funniest guy in the room, put a smile on everyone's face. And perhaps Ren saw Joe as having that Midas touch because he made his life better and he made everyone around him feel better. But perhaps Joe was going through these questionings of himself and now Ren questioning, does he have the Midas touch? Has he lost the Midas touch? And Ren is feeling that emptiness without Joe. He's, he lost Joe, and his whole world deteriorated around him because Joe meant so much to him, and that made his world better. And now it's like his kingdom turned to dust. He has that feeling of emptiness. When you lose something special to you, you feel empty and lost. But now I feel as if Ren is gaining that Midas touch because he's able to find something in his emotions. He's channeling those emotions, that feeling of emptiness that he has that surrounded him. He's turning that into something bigger and providing us with this beautiful music. He's turning this into greatness. The Midas touch Or do sad eyes blind me Over and over we go Over the hills and the valleys below Oh, and it follows me, follows me home And it suffocates me This is so beautiful. And I, I forgot how to be me. And it's that, that questioning there. Again, that questioning of oneself. You feel as if, have you lost the Midas touch? But now you're questioning, I forgot how to be me. How, how do I be me? Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? And I feel it's that duality. 
that's coming out there. Because when you feel at a loss and you don't know where to go in life, you start questioning everything, including yourself. And Joe provided such a light for everyone else. But as we learn about our happy friends, we come to learn sometimes how empty they are. And we don't know that because we see them as the happy one. We feel like they've got it figured out. And I've stated in previous videos, check on your happy friends. We lose way too many important people in our lives. And it's a lot of times the ones that seem the happiness, but they're the ones that have the biggest smile and the ones that seem the happiest to us, but they're really not happy. And we don't know that because they won't let us in on that because they're concerned for our happiness. They don't want us to feel those feelings that they have. They don't want us to go through that. And even here, it's that duality because Ren is also questioning himself. He forgot how to be himself. I forgot how to be me because he lost some, someone that was such a big part of who he was and he felt lost. And that happens to so many people. We lose someone special to us, someone very close to us that we don't know how to function anymore. And we start questioning, what do we do now? Where can I go from here? I don't know what to do without them here. And again, you have that feeling of emptiness and you lose such a big vital part of yourself and you forget how to be yourself forget how to be me feel safe in these holes there are bruises on the walls there are bodies in the floors and they breathe so loudly i wish i could move get up and walk right out this tomb do our saviors die too soon Oh my goodness. <sighs> that just very smooth intensity that they channeled right there. And that very eeriness in descriptive tone that they had. The bruises on the walls and there's bodies in the floors. You don't feel safe in the halls. But it's very reminiscent. It's almost as if this is a live reading of Edgar Allan Poe. A telltale heart. You, you hear the body in the floor and the heart is beating. Oh, wow. That's so ghostly. I want to hear it again. feel safe in these holes there are bruises on the walls there are bodies in the floors and they breathe so loudly i wish i could move get up and walk right out this tomb oh and just their voices, the control they have to really draw us into that experience there. It was so vivid. And I, I was picturing it as if it was a live reading and putting these images together. And that very low tone that they started with. And it sounds so eerie with Ren just breathing. 
as he's describing each little detail to us and then the raising that they that they had there the raising it rose up like it was rising out of the tomb i just want to get up and walk right out of this tomb and they raised their voice <sighs> they're so beautiful even the, even the facial expressions from ren with the raising of the eyes the opening of the eyes it it just adds something to this performance that's so compelling and the again they add so much to all of their live performances or any any video i've seen them in it's the mannerisms and the facial expressions there's so many little details outside of just the voice that really captures the moment in the floors and they breathe so loudly oh. i wish i could move get up and walk right out this tomb do our saviors die too soon for my sins surround me over and Do our saviors die too soon? Wow. That questioning. Do our saviors die too soon? That questioning. Because if you lose someone that you consider your hero or someone may have helped pull you through something, and they provided so much to your life. But you weren't able to reciprocate that. And pull them through their dark times. But they were your savior. No matter who it is. Whoever is a big component to the happiness in your life. You consider them your hero, your savior. And you lost them. Did you, did you lose them too soon? It's that feeling of there was so much left for them in this life. And perhaps you pictured spending a lot more time with them. And that moment that you pictured is no more. And Ren mentions over the hills and the valleys below. And he told us in his post that he threw his clothes on as fast as possible and ran to the bridge. And it was up a hill, over the hills and the valleys. And it's that peaks and valleys of life. And I believe him running up that hill a big part of his life was flashing before his eyes. My sins surround me over and over we go over the hills and the valleys below always be follows me follows me follows me follows me suffocates me And that it follows me home. It follows me, follows me home. It follows like the movie It Follows. It's that paranormal force, that entity that follows you. And your sins surround you. So it's that connection there. That it follows. That paranormal energy of your sins you can't escape. It follows you over the hills and the valleys. Those ups and downs of life. No matter what, you can't escape it. You, the new peaks that you reach and those valleys. No matter what you do, you can't seem to escape your past sins because they're still in your mind. 
and it follows you home. Oh, and it's that those sins surrounding you, those are what's suffocating you. Those sins are strangling you. They're choking you to death. And you feel like you have no way out. You just need that release. Something to relieve you of the pain of that strangulation that the sins are giving you. This song raises so many questions. The where is my God? Where are you? And the pleading in the voices there. Just you can see and you can feel as they're about to belt out those lyrics. The tempo on the acoustics is racing. It's the heart racing. And then the cringing of the face. It's, you can't hold it in any longer. And you just want to scream and shout. And they shouted out. Where is my God? Where are you? It's that pleading for help. Questioning. Even your faith. Or questioning why. What is happening has happened. Why did this happen? Why am I here? Why are they not here? How could you let this happen? How could you let this transpire? And there's so many questions that you don't have answers to. And you're still searching. I want to go back through that again. That was so powerful. There's so much desperation just in those vocals, the crying out for help, that soul searching. When I don't know how to be me anymore, you turn to God and you hope for a response, a light guiding you. 
and you're questioning, where are they? Where is my God? Where are you? That pleading for help. As I'm sure, Ren spent so much time pleading, and it's really channeling through here. You can just, I can just feel the energy. Hmm. Gave up the fight A quick decision Late in the night That stayed with me For all of my life I miss you so <sighs> That peering off into the sky that Ren did when he was finishing those last couple lyrics. It's looking at the sky. And then we even see the camera pan off and face towards the sky here. I miss you so, Joe. And he finished off that beautiful tragic, haunting performance. Speaking to Joe. That was incredible. There was so many speaking points there, bringing up the questioning and the fragility and the rawness and the emotions that they just provided to us in a live session you can really just feel the energy radiating from their bodies and the mannerisms from chinchilla and the facial expressions and the just the racing of those acoustics when they raise the tempo in their voice and the range and control that they have over their voice. Even Chinchilla lowering her pitch to match Ren's. And then as they went through the rhythm and runs. So captivating. And that I forgot how to be me. When they really started hammering down at the end. And I could feel. It was that pain. And sometimes there's that anger in that pain. And that... Mm, like, you get so angry questioning how some things can happen. Because you're in so much pain. Whenever you lose something or someone that means so much to you, you go through such a wide range of emotions. And they took us through that journey there just in one live session the emotions that they expressed and we were only there for that moment and i know this means so much to ren and joe means so much to ren so for him to allow chinchilla to be a part of that performance they were able to lean on each other as a support system really shows how much Chinchilla means to Ren as well and how much he trusts her to allow her in on those emotions. They really showed us a master class. Forgot how to be me. You forget who you are. And you lost yourself when you lost them. The intertwining, I believe it was a dual perspective throughout. Even the questioning of oneself was in part Ren, but also in part Joe. Because you can only imagine what someone's going through. 
unless they tell you, you'll never know. But that questioning of God there at the end and that hallelujah, normally that's a praise term. You're praising God. But where is my God? Hallelujah. It Maybe the repetition of the hallelujah chant was trying to summon that God that you were trying to speak to. I feel like for such a long time, Ren, once he lost Joe, was stuck in a gray area in life, as such are we. Whenever we lose someone special to us, we're stuck in a gray area, almost limbo, and you don't know how to get out of it. You're looking for a light, something to guide you. And I believe Ren has opened those clouds. And now he is shining a light through his music to us and the world. He's really spreading his message of love for Joe through his music. And in those messages, he gives us so much of himself, but he gives us so much strength as well. Ren and Chinchilla just... They are amazing.